Hey everyone, Josh here with Fresh Start Customs, and today I've got a video to share with you guys about Kerf, finding the width of your laser beam and the amount of material that gets destroyed from the laser is what Kerf is. Um, I made a video similar to this in the past, uh, but this is going to be a little bit more in depth with more accuracy and uh, more information about how I do it and how I double it up to make it easier. So um, to get started, under the word Kerf over here is our actual design we're going to be talking about on the left. Um, I did a blown up version over here on the right just so you guys can see what's going on so I don't have to constantly zoom in and out. And then as you can see this is the finished project on both sides here. It's just a little simple slot and tab to show you guys what's going on. Uh, over here has no kerf. As you can see the uh, design will go up and down and it won't click into place. Over here has kerf and it holds the item into place. So that's essentially what we're trying to do is make sure that you don't need glue. It's a real nice tight fit um, and I'm going to show you guys how that works here. So anything that you see in black in this uh, project here is the actual design itself and anything that you see in red is going to be the width of the laser beam. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the width of the laser beam. As you can see that width of that laser beam is larger than the actual design that you've processed and it destroys that material on both sides of the laser beam. So as you can see Here's a side view, so if the laser would be cutting out the side of this project right here, around the edge, this is what you'd be seeing. Uh, the black area is your design, and then the width of the laser beam is on both sides, destroying the material around it. And then it kind of comes down to a diamond point here, kind of like if you would put um, a solar ray through a magnifying glass. It has kind of this diamond effect, which is called the focus point, um, is right here and then that would go up and down and that's the importance of focus height so if you have thicker material your glowforge will auto set that focus height where it'll go up or down determining where the best focus height would be um, that's why if it's off center and your focus height is wrong let's say all the way up here the power starts to diminish as to, as it gets past that focus point and it may not cut through your material all the way so you want to make sure you have the right focus height typed in or set autofocus on a Glowforge. They make it super easy. So uh, to find the actual kerf here, you're going to just print off a square. In this case, I've got a 1.25 inch square by 1.25 inches. I printed it off and then you use what's called a digital caliper. It's this tool right here on, in the center right here. Um, you then measure that square after it's cut and you minus the difference. So I took my 1.25 inches minus the difference of what my digital caliper read and then that's how I got this number here. Technically this number is doubled up on one side of your laser here. The reason why is your laser beam on, is on the inside here and it cuts both inside bridges. So when you take that measurement it's technically doubled up and this is the number that I use for just the one side. It makes it easier since you're mainly going to use double sided edges anyways. But if you need to know the actual exact measurement of one side of the beam, uh, you just divide it by two and that's how you come up with this number here. 99.9% .9 of the time you'll never use just one cut straight through your material. It'll always be two edges because you're going to be cutting out a square or a circle, etc. So I always use this doubled up number. It makes it easier for just the one side. And then on both sides of the fence here, technically uh, one side is still this number. So um, you would times that by two and you would get the 0 .0065 like we did over here. And that's technically the width of the whole laser beam. But I always like to double it up because you're going to be using this slot and the tab. So you're going to be using both the, in, uh, the inside of this tab and the outside of the, uh, this tab here. And so it's going to be one, two, one, two, three, and then four. So it's going to be um, basically four times this amount down here. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, just pay attention to the top amount here, which is doubled up and in my case, that's how I do it It makes it super easy a lot less math is involved and lost a lot less headaches 
But uh, basically, um, what I was saying is once you cut this square out, it's going to disintegrate both sides of that beam. And then you're going to be left over with this safe area. This little green edge here is going to be your safe area. And that's what's going to be left over. So basically, uh, after you did all of that math, that makes up the difference between your tab here, which is 0.75 inches. And then you subtract this amount uh, because you're doing all sides here this inside this inside this outside this outside and then that'll total the 0 0.013 inches so that's all i do is take this number subtract it by 0 0.013 inches and that's how i come up with this number for my slot and my tab and slot will fit in there perfect and like i showed you earlier it'll all stay together nice and tight just like that and it won't fall apart Lastly, I want to explain to you guys why I found the kerf of one side here with this doubled up number and when you would use just this number versus this number over here. This will be used for the actual height of your material or thickness of your material if you want zero wiggle room at all when your uh, piece goes down into the slot. So say this piece right here goes down into this slot. It may wiggle forward or backwards if you don't uh, compensate the kerf for that, which would be this number. And the reason why it's this number is because you're not actually cutting away the thickness of your material like you are around the edges of your material. So that thickness doesn't change, but this edge on the inside of this uh, piece here for your slot does change by this amount because it's uh, you have both sides here. So all you got to do is uh, subtract the thickness of your material by this number and you should have absolutely zero wiggle room. It's going to be extremely tight when you use both of those curves. I usually don't even um, use this ever, to be completely honest, um, unless there's a lot of wiggle room for some reason. I usually just type the thickness of my material in there and then uh, tap it in with a rubber tip hammer. And if it has a little bit of a tilt forward or backwards, it's very, very small. I just wanted to give you guys a heads up and more information about why I did this and how you can use this to adjust for the, the thickness as well. Now some people will do just the thickness and they won't do side to side, but then if you have a really tall project, they could tip and fall out the side possibly depending on how tight you made the center. Hopefully that explained it super in depth as quickly as possible for you guys. Um, if you need to pause or rewind the video at all, uh, go ahead and do so. But um, other than that, we'll catch you guys in the next one.